Hi folks, this is Tears of Skiller, and I'm going to show you a little piece of hardware I acquired about two years ago. Thought you would say that I would say like two months ago, but no. I had this sitting around for about a couple of years. Um, this is a this is an HP Net Server LC3, and I acquired it downtown. A doorman was throwing it away because. Um, an organization had bought new servers and didn't need this one anymore. Let's see, as you can see here, actually you can't see here because this has crappy macro. This belonged to a Nativity Mission Center and this used to be a, an inventory control server. Let's look at the features of this thing. The power and reset buttons are behind this little latch right here. As you can see, power on the top and the reset on the bottom. I love that snap. It sounds like I'm piloting a jet air fighter. And we're going to go down here. This has a single slot 400 megahertz Pentium 2, but it can support two processors. This only has sing this is only a single processor though. Serial number lock, but there it's not locked. So this is a floppy drive, three and a half inch, 24x CD-ROM. And an interesting thing that was actually standard on these servers, a tape drive. And this is a data eight, a DAT eight tape drive. So, and of course the hard drive on the bottom. This thing is a beast. This weighs about 50 pounds. And originally this came with Corel Linux 1.1, but um, I'm just playing around with it and I actually installed Red Hat 7.2 on it because you have to go back to the times of the machine. This has 120 megs of RAM, 64 megs in two slots, ECC RAM, but I have a couple of um, 256 megs, uh, 256 meg sticks lying around somewhere. So they'll probably be put in there sometime in the near future. And I'll show you another video with the internals of it. But for right now, let's turn this bad boy on and see what we got. Okay, so let's plop up and push the button on. Actually, <laughs> see, I'm stupid because I didn't plug it in. Let's plug this in right now. Yeah, I plugged everything in except the power. You definitely want to plug in the power when you're handling one of these. Now, also, I think the CMOS battery might be bad, so I probably will have to change it. Anyway. Point it this way, and let's turn this thing on, and let's go up to my monitor. There we go. Look at all those lights. Let's go up here to my monitor. It's a Dell monitor, but my machine is right here. It's actually using the DVI. This one's using the, um, the VGA out on it. See, there we go, Pentium 2. And by the way, this has a, and I'll actually pause it at the screen here to show you what else I have here. Like I said, 128 megs of RAM. It's testing, okay. And as you can see, 512K of cache on board, Adaptic SCSI drive, driver, Adaptic SCSI controller. As you can see, 4.26 gig SCSI drive. And of course, and of course, date and time lost because of the fact you can't see that because the contrast sucks. But um, let's go into the BIOS. And actually, it would help if I press the right key on the keyboard. Okay. BIOS is very this is a Phoenix BIOS, very uh, minimalistic. As you can see, I need a new BIOS battery. However, though, the pin broke on the BIOS battery, I mean the, bio, the battery thing, and it's right here. So I'll ha I had to electrical tape my BIOS battery on, and I still have to buy a new one because it's old, and it's, I actually smelled that it was leaking a little bit. So I look at the time now. I'm doing this at 3 o'clock in the morning, so this is 0, 3. Let me see if I can do this quickly. Oh, sorry, two, you know, it's almost three, so it's two, 49, 
and I want to go down to system date. Today is January the 17th now, and it's 2010. Okay, and this is key repeat. Next one is power on password, PS, uh, PCI slot devices. Let's save it. The weird part is the CMOS battery will save when it's power when it's still plugged in. So we'll see about that. And this will take a little while to to get the screen up because it's uh, initializing. Okay, let's get the memory test. No, the memory is already good. Got to keep this under 11 minutes, as you know. And I want to pause when we get up to this giant screen over here. Okay. And there's the drives. There we go. Let's pause this. Let's see. So as you can see, Pentium 2, 400 megahertz, one CPU, 128 megs of system memory, 512k of cache. Video memory is actually this is actually a Cirrus Logic on board. Video memory of one megabyte, 264 meg uh, ECC memories, and SCSIs. Yeah, BIOS version, CD-ROM and Ethernet and all that good stuff. So now let's go and continue on. Let's boot up Red Hat. Okay. So here we go. There we go. Red Hat kernel 2.4.7, which can only mean this is 7.2. And you may be asking why 7.2. Um, partly because I can actually install a, a complete environment even though I want to use this as a server. But um, I've actually had no problem in uh, having it detect any of my hardware on this, including the tape drive. So it's quite interesting. I'm at almost seven and a half minutes, so thankfully though, Red Hat 7 does not take that long to start up. And yeah, see, I still have IP tables on here. I plan to turn that off because I don't want to have... And by the way, I did upgrade SSH on it so it doesn't have the exploit in there. And of course, you hear two fans. One coming from the beast and one coming from my machine. Okay, so we're going to log in. BCCS. It's hard to type when you're holding a camera. Okay. Last login, January 17th. And my favorite command in the world, start X. Actually, not start C, start X. Try that again. All right, here we go. Now the display is a little bit off-center because I have to calibrate it and also want to see if I can get to 1024, but with one megabyte of video memory, I highly doubt that. KDE 2.2. Uh, I'll go for something more minimalist or I could try something else. And of course, now what's funny is that this actually does have a sound card. The original server did not come with a sound card. It did not come with a sound card, but as you can see, it's just fine. As you can see, standard KDE2 environment edge. Yes, everybody remembers these from their old glory days. Let's see if I can get switch hands with the camera. All right, come on, you stupid mouse, go up. All right, here we go. And of course, everybody remembers Mozilla, and this is Mozilla 0 0.9. And of course, there's days when they where Linux included Netscape. So let's go to Mozilla right now. And of course, it's taking a little, taking its sweet time. And of course, what's funny is that it still has the old Red Hat page. And the Red Hat page, as everybody knows, does not look like this anymore. And let's go to a simple website. This is 800 by 600, as you could imagine. This is a very big. So let's just go. Uh, 
Gotta look how pathetic Google looks on this. Look at that ugly anti-alias font. Ouch. But yeah, as you can see, standard KD2 fare. The clock is on the other end. But uh, that's going to be about it. So thanks for watching, and um, I'll have more videos for you later. Take care, folks.